This is Vern Venom Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Recently, a Los Angeles skydiver was killed when he pulled his ripcord too late while parachuting with three friends from 15,000 feet at the Gardner Field Jump Zone, seven miles east of Los Angeles. The men all jumped out in free fall until they reached the 2,800-foot level, but then this one man apparently did not realize how close he was to the ground. He waited too long to pull his ripcord and was instantly killed. Delay can be deadly in skydiving and in many aspects of life. Procrastination is perilous. Think for a moment of your spiritual life. You may have been putting off for years your quest for God, but this is far too important an issue to put off. You have a decision to make, and that decision is going to make you. It is a choice capable of entirely reorganizing and restructuring your life. It is the decision to give your life back to the God who gave you your life in the first place. And if you make that choice, that choice will in turn make you. The truth is every decision you make makes you. The decision you make to get more exercise will also make you a stronger human being, assuming that you carry out the decision. The decision you make to study law will make you a lawyer if you study with diligence. The choice you make to be a doctor or a nurse will make you a doctor or a nurse if you act on it and work toward it. God put humanity on this planet to make choices, and the power to decide is the power to become and to be what you decide. Your destination depends upon your decision. For every person steers his own ship. The currents, winds, and waves of circumstances may veer your vessel from its course at times, but nonetheless, you grip the mighty wheel. And you are every bit as free to spin it aimlessly and play a game of navigational roulette as you are to chart a forward course and go somewhere in your life. The choice is utterly, unalterably yours to make. And every decision you make, makes you. Each choice makes you what you are going to be, what you will become. But the greatest decision any free will human being ever faces is the choice to choose the will of God, to align your life with the divine destiny, which may, if you will have it so, be yours for time and eternity. That is the supreme choice of all. And the living God awaits your decision this instant. All right, here we are. It's the crucial game of the World Series. The score is tied. Top of the ninth inning. The bases are loaded. The best hitter in the league is up to bat. The pitcher is perspiring. His hands are trembling. His tongue is dry. The count is no balls and no strikes. What kind of a pitch should he throw? He decides on a fast ball. But as he begins to wind up, he changes his mind. No, I'll make it a curve ball. Or would a slow ball or a sinker be better? Well, by this time, he's thrown it. But since he hadn't made up his mind what kind of a pitch it ought to be, it turns out to be a sort of wobbly, easy, indecisive throw that any schoolboy or girl could hit and the batter connects and it's all over. If a baseball pitcher can't decide what kind of a pitch he's going to throw, he might as well not throw it at all. And if a man or woman cannot decide what kind of a life he or she is going to live, he or she will never really know what life is about. You have to choose. And the greatest choice you face is to choose the greatest, to commit yourself to the highest, to living as the son or daughter of God and a brother or sister to every other person on this planet you were born to be. No person's life is saved for eternity against that person's will any more than a man's life is saved from the ocean by a life rope against that person's will. If he's drowning but will not take the rope which is thrown out to him, that's his decision. If he doesn't grab it, it's up to him. And when the living truth is cast out to you, the truth of God's love, God's will, a plan for this planet, a purpose for your life, eternal life lying before you, if you will choose it, still the choice to accept that, to take that as your own and live by it, is yours for the making and no one else in all this vast starry universe can make that decision for you. The fact is, you can come to know God personally, experientially, as your father and your friend. God is the father of all humankind. But what does that mean? The word father is from the Latin pater and the Sanskrit pitar, meaning one who has begotten a child. Since God is the ultimate creator of all human beings, God is the father of all. 
Webster's new unabridged international dictionary actually defines the word father when capitalized as meaning God. It is the second of 11 definitions of the word father. So not only is it correct to define God as the father, but the word father is in fact also defined to signify God or the supreme being as the dictionary puts it. The two concepts are vitally interlinked. The definition of father goes on to include this thought in the dictionary. One who cares for or directs. And aptly, that applies to God. God is loving. God is affectionate toward his family, which includes all men and women and children, and directs us to live in love for one another on this earth, to care about each other, to help each other, to desire to do good to one another. My own father was a college science teacher and athletic coach, primarily of basketball, but also football and track. And I remember that when he died prematurely of heart trouble, while still a man in his 40s, my family received countless sprays of flowers, letters, phone calls, and telegrams from out of state and all over the country from men whose names we didn't recognize at all, but who identified themselves as former members of my father's football and basketball teams or college students of his. And after the funeral, a number of those former students and athletes came up to me and told me of things my dad had done for them, everything from getting them jobs to buying them groceries when they couldn't afford food, to patching up quarrels with their girlfriends, to kicking them off the team for fighting, to bailing them out of jail for stealing. My father was a tough but loving man, and those who played on the teams he coached felt he was a kind of father to them as well. In a sense, one could similarly say that the God of this universe is a tough but loving God. God is compassionate, forgiving, yes, but tough as well. God is righteous and good. And God has very little patience with our deliberate disloyalty and our willful wrongdoing. God calls us to live up to what we are, the sons and daughters of God and his family. And that means commitment. I remember back in my home state of Kansas, if a man wanted to agree with something somebody said, he might use the expression, you bet your boots, or another way of saying the same thing was you bet your life. But a person was so certain about a matter that he would be willing to wager his very existence on it. Yet in a larger sense, that is what real religion is. It's betting your life on what you believe. It is saying, I am going to live by this truth. I'm going to base my every thought, my every hope, my every action on the best that I know. It is living by your highest values. The man or woman of faith wagers all he has himself at all he is himself or herself on the conviction that God is real, that life has purpose, and that eternal life lies beyond. I challenge you now to this faith, to know that God loves you. The Father is vitally interested in your life, your needs, your possibilities. Through faith in God, your entire existence can thus be transformed, past, present, and future. God can transform your past by forgiving it, your present by inspiring it, and your future by directing it. But all of this is your choice. It is yours for the having. God already loves you. Your choice is loving God. Already God offers forgiveness to you. Your choice is whether to accept it, to claim it. Already God has a will for your life. Your decision is whether or not to choose to do it. Already God counts you as a member in his family. The choice before you is whether to believe that and in faith begin to live as the son or daughter of God and the brother or sister to humankind which you were born to be. And all this and joy inexpressible are yours by simple faith in the living God. When you read the help wanted section of the newspaper, you discover that employers are seeking men and women with high morals, people who haven't, extensive police records with good character references. But those are not the living God's requirements. If God ran an advertisement in the help wanted section, it would not be just for good people. No, God in his fatherly love seeks all people. God is especially interested in the very sort of people who couldn't get a job by their character references, whose lives have been wrong and sinful and hurt and unhappy and in trouble. If your life isn't the way you want it to be, you qualify. Whomever you are, God seeks for you. God loves you. 
God desires the transformation of your life and has given a fragment of infinity of his very spirit to indwell your mind, to change your thinking, to alter your outlook, your attitude, the way you think about yourself and feel about the universe, that you may come to understand you're at home here. You belong. You have a place and a divine destiny, an eternal life, if you will choose to live it. You remember back to summer camp as a youngster? Or in the military service, or in your dorm, or fraternity at college, the excitement of mail call time, when somebody would stand up with all those letters in his hand and read off the names and pass them all out. And do you recall the impatient anticipation of listening to other names being called and waiting to hear your own, and at last the joy, the excitement of hearing it and getting a letter to you? That is what I'm saying on this radio broadcast right now. You may have felt that real faith and real hope and love and joy were things which other people could experience, but not you yourself. But this very moment, I'm calling your name. This isn't for somebody else. This is for you. You are an infinitely valuable person. The God who created this universe of universes knows your name, knows who you are, and loves you. And by the power of God, your life can be transformed, beginning here and now, if you will have it so. But the decision is yours for the making. Then write to us, will you? At the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, there's a reason for your life. And haven't you always felt it? Haven't you always really known it inside? There's a reason for your existence. God has a will for you. I've written free literature on the spiritual life. On these very things, yours without cost, charge, or obligation, when you write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, The Fatherhood of God, The Brotherhood of Man, Life After Death, What Happens to You When You Die, What Lies Beyond. All of this, yours with no cost, charge, or obligation when you write to us. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell that mailing address, Box 3080 Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program. Proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.